From the Oklahoma Newsroom, this is The Press Row. I'm Jenny Carlson here with Barry Trammell, and we are brought to you by Papa John's Pizza. You can go online anytime and order your pizza at papajohns.com. Time for our inbox segment, your email questions answered here on video. Barry, we've got a mix of stuff to talk about, but let's start with this one. It comes from Keith. Keith says, the two losses to Kansas State sure loom large now for the OU men. It would have been nice to have won at least one of them. No doubt about that, Barry. I mean, think about how close the Sooners are to playing for a Big 12 title this year. Uh, we were talking this week, uh, huge lead in Ames for OU, huge lead for West Virginia over Kansas. If either one of those leads holds, Sooners are playing for at least a tie of the championship on Saturday. And you go back to those Kansas State games, you, you can't lose at home to Kansas State, which is going to be a sixth or seventh place team. Uh, so yeah, this is a Sooner team good enough to win the Big 12 championship. But it's not going to happen. Yeah, good enough to win the Big 12 championship. But as those K-State games showed, Barry, also good enough to lose to not very good teams. And uh, the first game, uh, losing on the road in the Big 12, no matter who it is, is always a possibility. I mean, you can go to Texas Tech. You can go to TCU. You can lose in those places. You, so you can definitely lose at K-State. But losing that home game to Kansas State when they were playing so, so well, um, it, Sooners, finish second. They've got to look back on that one and say, man, what an opportunity lost. All right, back to the inbox. This one comes from Tom. Tom says, it's totally ridiculous to get energized over a season with the injury problems of this Thunder team. When you look at everything, it's a miracle they have the record that they do. I don't know about miracle, but it's a, it's pretty good when yeah, you think about you it. You know what? Here's the truth. This is sort of a lost season. No matter what happens, uh, if, if Thunder wins the NBA championship, it's a remarkable story. But if this team doesn't get out of this starting gates in the playoffs, gets beat in the first round, in some ways you just got to write it off because, uh, you know, here we are. We're into March, uh, and Kevin Durant's still not healthy. Yeah. Still don't have all their horses. Still haven't gelled. Still haven't meshed. You know, in, in some ways, this is a, it's a lost season. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know that anybody can do anything about it. It's mm -hmm. the plagues of Egypt in terms of injury. So... Uh, if somebody knows what they can do about it, fine. But uh, I don't know what you can do about it. Yeah, I tell you what, the plagues, we've talked about those before against the 76ers. Serge Ibaka gets hit in the stomach, goes down like he's been shot, and I thought, there goes the last of them. <laughs> Serge Ibaka had, had avoided injury, and I thought, well, now he's done in for it. It got him, too. It turns out he was fine. But I will say this. Maybe uh, Tom's right. Maybe you can't get energized by what you're seeing from the Thunder. But it sure is interesting oh, because you just never know what's going to happen. It's with these fabulous guys. entertainment. You you play the Sixers and it goes overtime when yeah. you, they should have beaten the Sixers in regulation with the ghost team they had back in November. It's always interesting. Okay, back to the inbox. This one from Brent. Brent says, "Funny thing, my 14-year-old daughter tweeted during a game, Russell." Eat a Snickers. You play like Reggie Jackson when you're tired. <laughs> Some funny stuff there, Barry. Well, I think there's a hole in that theory we just heard because I've never seen Russell Westbrook get tired. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I did see, if you remember back, I think it was the, uh, the uh, Portland game where Russell missed the first foul shot when he's got a chance to tie there at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. He'd played so hard for so long. I think he was uh, fatigued at that point. But the truth of the matter is, Russell Westbrook doesn't get very tired. That's one of his secrets is he's still he's the same in the middle of the fourth quarter as he was in the middle of the first quarter. Everybody else is dragging. But, uh, yeah, uh, Russell is not uh, Superman, but he's doing a pretty good imitation. Yeah, he definitely is. And, and when you think about the load he's carrying, uh, you know, not having his – his sidekick or his uh, equal or whatever you want to say, and Kevin Durant, a guy that will knock down a shot anytime he throws him the ball, to not have that mentally has got to really weigh on Russell Westbrook, but yet he continues to play hard. Um, yeah, he wakes up in the morning ready to play an NBA game, it seems like. It's a remarkable thing. All right, back to the inbox one last time, and this one comes from Larry. Larry says, it's great news that Baker Mayfield is in the, OU comp or in the quarterback competition at OU. Watching him in last spring's game, he's the guy – to run Lincoln Riley's offense. Well, Barry, lots of talk about quarterbacks. What do you say to that? You know what's interesting is that spring game is fascinating. When you came out of that spring game and we all said, you know what, Baker Mayfield looked better than Trevor Knight. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that Baker Mayfield looked great. It's that Trevor Knight didn't look so hot. Uh, but he was coming off the Sugar Bowl, the, uh, the, uh, the great performance against Alabama, and you thought it's just a spring, it's no big deal. And then Trevor has the so-so year. Looking back at the spring, you think, you know, maybe Baker Mayfield was the best quarterback on campus last season. And now with Lincoln Riley in town, 
uh, I think is a very good chance that Baker Mayfield's the quarterback of the 2015 Sooners. Well, especially when you hear Lincoln Riley talking about the fact when Baker Mayfield decided he was leaving Texas Tech, Lincoln Riley wanted him to come to East Carolina. So he'd obviously seen something in Baker Mayfield and uh, in, in what he had done at Texas Tech that he really liked. So I think that there's a possibility that, uh, that Baker Mayfield, whether Lincoln Riley or anybody else is admitting it, is at the top of that competition. But remember this about last year's spring game. All of Baker Mayfield's snaps came against second and third team defenses. So don't go assuming that just because he had a great game, looked fantastic, it's how he's going to look against Big 12 defenses or, uh, or even the first team defense at OU once they start playing against each other. It'll be interesting to see how he does against better defenses, whether in practice or in a competition next year. And be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoman.